Hello everyone, welcome back to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we're gonna to be putting AI to the test and we're gonna see if it can do a better job designing electronics than a human. If you've been paying attention to AI in electronics, you are probably aware of a very cool platform called CircuitMind. I recently spoke with Tomide Adesami, one of the co-founders of CircuitMind, and we used his platform to recreate one of the designs that was submitted to our One Minute Design Review series. We're gonna put the two designs side by side and see who really did it better, AI or a human. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to put AI to the test and see how well it can really design electronics. Now, to do this, we're not going to use ChatGPT, we're not using Claude, we're not using any of the popular LLMs. What we're actually going to use is a platform called CircuitMind. Now, recently I sat down with Tomide Adesamne. He is the co-founder of CircuitMind, and his platform is an AI-based platform that is used to generate circuitry and schematics for use in PCB design. If you're a fan of the Octopart channel, you have probably seen Tomide on an episode of the Control Listen podcast. If you haven't seen that episode, check out the link in the description. Now, what exactly is CircuitMind? Well, as I mentioned, it's not an LLM but it is used to generate schematics and circuits for use in PCB design. The way it works is pretty simple. You basically put in some constraints and design requirements, and the system will use its data set to generate circuit blocks, link it all together based on a block diagram input, and then it outputs schematics that you can use to build your PCB. Let's take a look at this demo from Tamide to see exactly how it works. And so I can say I want stock today or sometime in the future. And so that's where we're getting that information next hour. The other thing is, where, what distributors do I want to consider components and stock for? Well, I'll go to these filters. And in these filters, you can see that I've, I, we have over, lots and lots of distributors here, over 300 distributors. This information is coming from the X, Nexar API. Um, and so you can select the distributors you want and deselect the ones that you don't want. Now, CircuitMind at its core is an AI-driven design tool, but in some ways, it's also a supply chain tool. Take a look at this clip where Tamide breaks down the BOM for a generated design. And so that's the power of using this sort of supply chain information when you're generating the design. Because this design that I've generated now without components in stock is going to be less useful for someone who really cares about components being in stock. As we can see from that clip, the system essentially generates different options that you can choose from as the design engineer. If you look at those VOMs, you see some power optimized, you see size optimized and cost optimized and balanced results, all of which you can choose from and use as the basis for the design as you create your PCB. Now, obviously, CircuitMind does a great job of generating these circuits and generating schematics from an input. Also, it does a great job of leveraging supply chain data to give you a BOM that will work for different constraints and cost requirements. But how well do these designs actually function electrically? And are they going to do a better job than a human designer? Well, to put this to the test, what we did is we used CircuitMind to recreate one of the designs that was an early submission in our One Minute Design Review series. The original design that we used was submitted by Sohail Shabafruz, and I have it pulled up here on screen. This design is an ESP32 Pico-based IMU. You can see here that we have an image of the PCB layout, and I have all of the schematics pulled up here as well. You can see we started from a block diagram, and this block diagram that you see on page two was used as the input into CircuitMind to generate a set of schematics. So now, let's take a look at those generated schematics and do a side-by-side -side comparison, and we'll see who did it best. Did the AI win, or did the human win? Now, I have the generated schematics pulled up here on screen. You can see here that it generated a hierarchical design. Here, I'm in the top level sheet where we have some of the power regulators and connectors. Now, you can see here that we have the main input regulator and we have a charging regulator here. We then have some connectors and then we have a security and authentication IC. We then have some other sheets where we have our sensors and then we have our microcontroller. Now, let's go back here to the main regulator. Now, you can see that this main regulator is right here a 5 volt to 3.3 volt regulator. And if we just compare this to the main input on the human design, you can see here that we have 
some significant differences. First, the human design has a 4.2 volt input, not a 5 volt input. We also see that it does give a 3.3 volt output, but the regulator design and topology is quite a bit more complex. You can see here in this regulator circuit that Sohail incorporated a FET. You can see that we have um, quite a bit more capacitance. We have several resistors. And if you compare this to the circuit mine generated design, it's actually much more complex. The circuit mine design did use a buck converter to step down the five volt input to 3.3 volts, but it used a highly integrated power module with an integrated inductor. So this is a big change from what we see here in Sohail's design, where we have an external inductor and we don't have a highly integrated chip. Now, I think someone might ask, why didn't Sohail use the highly integrated power module instead of this Texas Instruments component? I think this just illustrates the fact that it's an AI and AI tends to have visibility into a lot more data than a human does. So of course, if you don't know about the component, then you probably won't end up prioritizing it for a new design. Next, let's take a look at some of the other circuits. So let's take a look at the sensor sheet. Here on the sensor sheet, you can see that we have three different integrated circuits that are used for all of our sensors. This one here is a gyroscope and accelerometer. Here we have a pressure sensor, and here we have a magnetometer. Now let's take a look at the human designed IMU. If we go down to the sensor page, you can see here that the human design uses four sensors, not three sensors. So again, the circuit mine design prioritized a more integrated solution where the gyroscope and the accelerometer are tightly integrated together. Now, I think there's something else to notice here, and this is something that we've talked about quite a bit in recent videos. If you take a look at this section of the schematic from Sohail, you can see here that Sohail is using some filters and ferrite beads in order to isolate the power rails for the sensors from the main 3.3 volt system rail. Now, of course, I've mentioned in many videos and many experts concur on this point that this is probably not a good practice. Basically, you should avoid doing this unless you can prove that you actually need it. But if we go back into the circuit mine design, you can see here that all of these sensors are running off of the main 3.3 volt rail. There is no isolation between the 3.3 volt rail and some other power rail that's used to power up these sensors. Now you can see here that the interface and connectivity is basically the same. Here we have an SPI interface. Here we have an I squared C interface. If I go back over here to the sensors in the human design, you can see here that we basically have the same interface selection. So that's one of the constraints in the design. We want to use only the interfaces that are available on the microcontroller. In this case, it's essentially just SPI and I2C. Next, let's take a look at the microcontroller section. Here I've pulled up the microcontroller section in the human design, and let's take a look at the microcontroller sheet in the AI design. We have a few major differences. First, you can see here that we have an impedance matching circuit going to an antenna. Whereas here on the human design, we just have a direct connection between the LNA and the antenna. There is no impedance matching network. Next, going back over here and looking at the SD card, you can see here that in the SD card, we have some circuit protection applied on some of these lines. Whereas in the human design, I don't see any of that circuit protection in this sheet. Now, that's really important when you're working with an SD card. That SD card could create an ESD event when it's being inserted, and so it's a good idea to have some transient voltage protection on these data lines coming into this SD card. Now, even though there are some minor differences in how the circuits were designed between these two cases, I think the human design and the AI design in this case are pretty comparable. You can see here that we have all the required pull-ups on these lines. You can see here that we have the ports named correctly. We have all of the main rails assigned to all of the important pins on the ESP32. And we essentially have the same thing here in the human design. Now, there are a couple of minor differences that I wanna point out. First, just take a look at this enable pin on the human design. You can see here that there is a cap in parallel with that enable pin, whereas if we go to the AI design, we don't see that cap. Of course, that's used to just control the turn on time. Another thing that you see in the AI design that is pretty smart is the values for these capacitors. These capacitors are to be determined for their value. And that's of course because 
the impedance of the antenna coming off of this impedance matching network could vary, and you need to design this impedance matching network such that those capacitors very precisely match the impedance at that 2.4 gigahertz frequency. So as we zoom out and we look at the AI created design, we really see that it does include all the necessary stuff that's needed to basically recreate the functionality of the human design. But when we start to look at some of the stuff that's in the human design, we see a lot of little details that the AI just didn't take into account. One of them is, for example, things like these solder bridges. Solder bridges are really useful for making your design reconfigurable. They can also act as test points, and we just don't see any of that stuff in the AI design. Also, when we go down to this page, we can see on this page that we have some analog circuitry that's coming off of a 1x3 header. Now, all of this circuitry, of course, is generated by the human, and it doesn't come in a data sheet. It's not in any kind of integrated package. And so I think, of course, it's very difficult for the AI to queue in to any of this type of circuitry. And therefore, it also did not include it in the design. There are some other little things, such as, you see here we have an LED. This LED was included in the human design, but because it wasn't specified in the AI design, of course, it also did not get included. Finally, I'd like to point out that just because this AI gives you complete schematics, it doesn't mean it fully prepares you to complete a PCB layout. You'll notice here that if we go back into the human design and we scroll up and we look at some of these other sheets, you can see here that we have parameter sets and rules being applied to different nets in the sheet that's being done directly in the schematic. We also see additional documentation that's been created by Sohail, and of course, the AI is not able to do that. I think that's because there's a lot of ambiguity in those points, especially once you get into a PCB layout. There are a million different ways to create that PCB layout, and the AI just can't account for all of it. So what's the verdict here? Who did the design better, and is AI really an effective or useful tool for designing electronics? Well, I happen to think it is an effective and useful tool if used correctly. And in this case, it does get you maybe halfway or three quarters of the way to completed schematics that are ready for PCB layout. One thing that's really useful is, of course, if you've never designed any of these circuits from scratch, the AI is really helpful because it gives you a place to start from and then you can take that generated design, adapt it for your specific application, and you can do all of this without having to do huge deep dives into data sheets. Now, of course, it can't fully remove a human from the design process because not only does the human have to finish and clean up all of these schematics and make it ready for PCB layout, but frankly, a human has to do all of the conceptual work on the front end to even create the prompt and the idea that's going to be used to generate this design. So I really don't think you'll ever fully remove humans from this decision-making process. I think it modifies their role and helps them be more productive. And I think CircuitMind is a great tool for doing just that. Before we wrap up this video, I just want to say a big thank you to Tamide for taking the time to go over the original design with me and recreate it in CircuitMind. If you're interested in learning more about CircuitMind, check out the links in the description, and of course, watch that podcast episode with Tamide to see a demo of how the platform works. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. Make sure to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, leave your comments and questions in the comment section, and let us know who you think did the design better the human or AI. Thanks for watching, everybody.